We are uh, ready to resume our uh, first day of our plenary session. So if you may take your seats, please, because we are having a very interesting debate from now on. It's the debate on better regulation, foresight, and the European Commission's work program for 2022. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to have with us uh, the Vice President of the European Commission for Interinstitutional Relations and Foresight, Mr. Maros Seskovic. So, thank you very much for being here, Vice President. It's uh, a great honor again, and I'm really happy to uh, welcome you in the Committee of the Regents. Thank you for having accepted our invitation to exchange views on better regulation. One, uh, the legislative working program of the European Commission in uh, 2022, and on the upcoming second foresight report. The European uh, Committee of the Regents and myself are your committed partners when it comes to taking into account the territorial impact of EU legislation and evaluate a new legislation is needed. The quality of the EU legislation is better when local and regional authorities share with the Commission their experience and knowledge on the ground based always on subsidiarity. Therefore, we would expect and very much appreciate if this territorial dimension will be duly taken into account in the European Commission's 2021 State of the Union. I'm sure you would agree with me that an effective cooperation with local and regional authorities allows the European Union to improve its policy cycle, policy design and preparation, adoption, implementation, evaluation and revision. With the same objective, we wish to make the process more territorially sensitive. Since 2020, the COR resolution on the Commission's work program reflects contributions received by regional parliaments with legislative power. They are strong engines, often too neglected. Their proximity to citizens and their legitimacy in democratic terms would significantly improve the quality and the density of the European democracy. For instance, yesterday, presidents of regional parliaments and regions endorsed a declaration that initiated an alliance of regions of European democracy. The purpose of this alliance is to use the strength and the diversity of regions with and without legislative powers to create a strong critical mass that can make a better impact on the EU legislative process. Finally, Vice President Sefcovic, we look forward to receive the second report on the foresight, seeking strategic autonomy at European level may affect different regions in Europe and very differently. So the experience of the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted that only coordinated European action can be successful. The Committee of Regions will explore the option of acting as a hub for existing foresight activities at local and regional level in order to ensure that their contributions can be fed into the European processes. This is how we view the collaboration with you and this is how we believe is the way we need to move forward. So, dear Vice President, good friend Maros, welcome, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, uh, dear President, dear Apostolos, dear members. It's always a pleasure to address uh, the Committee of Region. And once again, I would like to thank you for your kind invitation because indeed it's uh, very timely and I will go through the topics as you suggested, uh, Mr. President. Uh, and also I would like uh, to inform you that today we adopted uh, uh, the communication on the long-term vision uh, of the uh, rural areas in Europe, which I think is also very important contributions to the deliberations and uh, discussions uh, which uh, you will have uh, in the future, because of course, uh, uh, in these times, we all see how the rural development, how that uh, uh, rebalancing of the life in the cities and the outskirts or outside of the uh, cities, uh, uh, especially after this very unpleasant uh, lockdowns and common experience is uh, becoming more and more important. It's kind of reversing that uh, global trend uh, of urbanization, which we have seen over the uh, last uh, decades. But uh, coming back to the topics as you uh, propose them, I want uh, first and foremost thank uh, uh, to the committee for the great cooperation, uh, for the fact that uh, we are getting from you the, the, the direct uh, input uh, uh, from the local city, uh, regional authorities level, and then you make sure that uh, uh, your voices are heard and for us, it's uh, very uh, essential. If it comes to the better regulation, I'm sure that uh, uh, you are very uh, aware that we adopted our communication on better regulation already at the uh, end of uh, April. And what, of course, uh, was our goal here is to make sure that our legislation is uh, 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 better targeted, uh, that is effective that it's uh, more easy uh, to, comply with, uh, to comply with and uh, that uh, we develop further our techniques to avoid unnecessary uh, regulatory uh, burdens. And uh, because of that, we've been uh, focusing uh, in the communication on the three main aspects. The first one was to improve uh, the outreach because all stakeholders uh, should play an active part in uh, policy making process and here I'm referring again to local, regional, national authorities but also to social partners, businesses, academia and uh, the general public. <coughs> and I know that in the uh, past uh, we heard the criticism that even though our consultation uh, mechanism was considered as the best in the world by the OECD that for many stakeholders it was rather complex uh, rather uh, uh, difficult to navigate uh, through and on some of the let's say flagship projects we've been coming back uh, uh, to you three or four times uh, uh, to get uh, your opinion so we changed that we i believe simplified we made uh, the have your say portal our major consultation platform more uh, user uh, friendly and uh, we are now introducing a single call uh, for evidence through clearer questionnaires. And I hope that it would also increase the interest in uh, consultations. It would make them faster, simpler. And of course, uh, it would very much uh, rely upon regional authorities to be active in uh, uh, this uh, respect, because you would be the first hand experience and first hand contributors into how this uh, potential legislation or, 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 or uh, policy making would uh, affect uh, the lives of the people uh, on the ground in your regions. I also count uh, very much uh, on the Committee uh, of uh, Regions uh, RegHub 2.0 network because uh, extremely, uh, uh, extremely useful. Uh, they're very good partners and they help us not only in disseminating uh, these uh, new calls at local, regional and national level, but also the, the contributions and tackling some parts uh, of uh, the unnecessary European bureaucracy is extremely welcome. Second, I think very um, important uh, uh, element uh, has to do with transparency. Again, when I come back uh, to the consultation process, uh, often we heard the complaint that uh, we 
contributed uh, to the public uh, consultations. We sent you our input, but we never heard from you again. And I know that this is very discouraging. This is not good practice. And therefore, uh, we will be publishing factual summaries of the consultations with participants so everyone could see what was taken on board, how we work with the contributions which have been sent uh, to the European uh, uh, Commission and how we use it uh, as evidence in uh, preparing our uh, uh, proposals. On, on third, I think um, a very important um, element which we focused on was uh, the reduction of costs which inevitably come uh, with uh, uh, legislation. So that they remain uh, reasonable, uh, they remain proportionate. And to achieve uh, this, we put into effect uh, uh, one in, one out uh, uh, approach, uh, but we adjusted it to the European uh, uh, conditions. Because by our approach, what we mean is to offset burdens emanating from new legislative proposals by reducing uh, equivalent existing burdens in the same uh, policy area. And here I would like to underline that it does not mean a mechanical withdrawing uh, of uh, uh, the old piece of legislation for every new proposal. I think we have to be smarter than this. We have to look at the burdens, at the cost, and how can we offset it in the same sector, preferably uh, within uh, the, the, the same year. At the same time, uh, we will make absolutely sure, because that was one of the messages we got from all uh, stakeholders, uh, 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 that we would never allow these efforts to lower our world-leading economic, social and environmental uh, standards. And we want to use this tool to make sure that EU legislation is easy to comply with, is efficient and uh, fit uh, uh, for the future. And therefore, once again, I would like to thank the Committee of Regions uh, uh, and uh, your representatives in the Fit for uh, Future uh, platform because they're doing great uh, work and we very much uh, need their support and their insights uh, in uh, our uh, daily uh, work in our uh, legislative uh, efforts. Here, once again, I... Uh, I'm referring to Reg, Reg Hub 2.0 because on top of the usual asks, we added one very special and very important ones. You, I'm sure, uh, noticed that uh, President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, is now traveling around the member states uh, and uh, presenting together uh, with the heads of states and government uh, the recovery and resilience plans, uh, which we managed uh, to conclude and which we are now launching and putting into the implementation phase. And you know that uh, through these plans, uh, we want to invest in European economy 750 billion euros, which is massive investment. It's the European moment. It's a European Marshall Plan uh, for, uh, for the 21st century. And uh, when speaking about the 21st century, if you want to achieve our goals in green and digital transition, if you want to be more resilient, what we need is infrastructure for 21st century. And we all know that any infrastructural project in Europe uh, is faced with a lot of obstacles, uh, very demanding uh, permitting uh, procedures, uh, lots of uh, difficulties on all levels of governance. And therefore, I asked, and I'm very glad that uh, uh, RegHub uh, took uh, this challenge uh, to identify the bottlenecks, why it takes us so long to approve the infrastructural projects, which we know we need for the modernization of our economies. And, and I'm very glad uh, that Reg Hub is working on it and very much looking forward to the findings, uh, which I hope we will be then able to put uh, into the, uh, into the uh, practice. Overall, coming back to the Fit for Future uh, platform, there is very strong mandate for topics of particular importance for local and regional authorities, be it uh, annual uh, work program, be it uh, cross-border healthcare, public procurement, air quality, all of these uh, issues being suggested uh, by uh, the, the Committee of Regions, and uh, uh, we very much uh, appreciate that, as well as the fact that uh, three 
of the platforms will be now led by the committee's representatives. The, the next element, uh, which we've been very much focused on preparing the better regulation communication, was how to embed uh, foresight into our uh, political and legislative work. As you know, foresight is new, modern, anticipatory technique of uh, the governance. We need to learn from the past crises to anticipate better what might be around the corner or over the uh, horizon, and we want to use these techniques to factor in also our obligation that every proposal which we put on the table would have to respect uh, uh, the UN um, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, it has to be digital by default, and uh, uh, it has to respect uh, uh, the rule which we all collectively adopted, uh, do no significant harm. And I believe that uh, uh, foresight techniques in particular uh, would help us uh, to do that uh, in a better way. We would need foresight also because we know that the world will not be less complex. I think we have more disruptive uh, future ahead of us and therefore we need this EU-wide network of experts, academia, uh, to make sure that our legislation would be uh, future-proof, that uh, in our next steps, we would be guided uh, by, the, by the science and by uh, scenario planning, which would allow us uh, to choose the future we want from us and the future which we need uh, to build uh, uh, today. Uh, the, the last point uh, on uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, area, which I would like to, uh, to mention, is uh, uh, one uh, uh, very noble task I think we've got as a uh, foresight uh, community. And this is actually um, implementation or work on the social uh, summit uh, uh, conclusions in Porto. I'm sure that you noted uh, uh, that the leaders are calling upon us to go beyond GDP. I think that they based uh, this call on the fact that we've been working uh, with uh, on uh, resilience dashboards where we used uh, the existing data for every single member states, and we looked uh, what it means from the point of view of resilience. How resilient is our healthcare? How resilient are our digital networks? How resilient we are uh, from the uh, or vis-a-vis -vis the, the the climate change? Where we are placing ourselves, our member states and EU as such, uh, on this global map of uh, competitors. Uh, 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 who are, of course, uh, represented by major economic and political powers. And, uh, and uh, that uh, led, uh, of course, the leaders to think about the need to develop, uh, hopefully in the future, alternative uh, to, the, to the GDP, which would reflect better the economies of 21st century, the well-being index, and what we would see is as a healthy growth of our uh, economies. Of course, it would entail um, uh, for Europe to preserve and further develop our freedom to act, meaning our open strategic autonomy. We have seen how vulnerable we could be in certain sectors, how health materials or uh, medicines uh, production over the last year, and therefore uh, we'll be working very hard on making sure that Europe uh, is the master of her own destiny and that we uh, clearly would have the autonomy to act uh, by putting uh, uh, the adequate stress on open strategic autonomy. And my final, final point on the Commission uh, work program, of course, it would be very much focused uh, in the next year on uh, the implementation of the next generation uh, EU, on uh, restarting our economy on making sure that we will put uh, into the uh, place uh, the uh, new financial uh, perspective and uh, that we would do our utmost to turn uh, the crisis into opportunity uh, using for modernizing economy and for emerging uh, from the crisis stronger. I very much look forward uh, to your resolution which you are going to discuss and vote on this afternoon and I can uh, assure you that uh, definitely use it to inform State of the Union address uh, which will be presented uh, by the President of the Commission in September 
and you know that this is programmatic speech which leads to the commission work program so once again thank you very much for all the contribution including your resolution on uh, the commission work program and uh, uh, i very much look uh, for our uh, discussion for your questions and for our future uh, cooperation thank you very much Thank you very much, uh, Vice President Sefcovic. Uh, I would like to give the floor now to Mr. Geblevich from the EPP for two minutes, please. Thank you very much. Dear uh, Vice President Sefcovic, on behalf of the EPP group, I would like to welcome you to our plenary session and thank you for this very insightful intervention, uh, your presence today, and also your words, for example, about RICAP initiative is a proof uh, of the European Commission's readiness to take into account uh, the regional and local perspective in the EU foresight thinking and development. Uh, to do so, uh, the Commission can make use of the resources of existing foresight capacity in many of our regions and cities. In addition, the COR can contribute with the information gathered from many networks and uh, consultation ac uh, activities. Uh, the experience of the, the COVID-19 pandemic taught us that only coordinated European action can includes, uh, uh, that includes uh, subnational uh, needs and contributions can be successful. Uh, Therefore, the strategic uh, autonomy of the European Union as main force of the next uh, foresight report must be built together with the regions and cities. Tapping into rich source of the smart specializations uh, strategies developed by many regions uh, today will allow us to address EU strategic dependencies efficiently. Uh, this is the key to achieve the ambitious twin digital and green transformation in Europe. Vice President, concluding, the pandemic also triggered wider awareness of our dependency in pharmaceutical products from other countries. The EU must address shortages and enhance strategies autonomy uh, by bringing back the production of certain medicines, critical substances, yeah. including vaccines and protective equipment to Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you. The floor now for two minutes to Mr. Armao from the EPP. Grazie Presidente. Grazie al Vicepresidente Sefcovic. Eh, la ringrazio la presenza qui al Comitato Europeo delle Regioni. E ringrazio il gruppo PPE che ci consente su temi di importanza cruciale per i numerosi toccati dal suo intervento. Con l'agenda del migliore, della migliore regolamentazione, la Commissione europea intende rafforzare ulteriormente i principi di sussidiarietà e proporzionalità e dare seguito ai lavori della Task Force per la sussidiarietà e della proporzionalità. Fortunatamente la Commissione si è impegnata a praticare la sussidiarietà attiva con un impiego sistematico della griglia di valutazione della sussidiarietà. Tuttavia occorre sottolineare come il tema della migliore regolamentazione per garantire una visione più completa possibile della capacità di legislazione comunitaria di rispondere con saggezza alle nostre comunità eh, deve darsi da fare attivamente perché amministrazioni, persone e imprese possano contribuire alla formazione della decisione europea. A tale scopo, fra gli strumenti messi in campo dalla Commissione, le consultazioni rappresentano un modo efficace come rappresentano eh, elementi di innovazione i hub della sussidiarietà del Comitato delle Regioni che sono stati istituiti e all'invito fatto eh, dalla Task Force per la sussidiarietà. Si tratta di creare un sistema basato sul costante dialogo multilivello tra regioni, enti locali, stati e Commissione europea. Per questo più che mai il PPE auspica che le autonomie regionali e locali eh, offrano il proprio tangibile contributo alle consultazioni della Commissione europea. 
tra gli obiettivi declinati dal PPE vi è quello di creare un nuovo spirito comunitario in grado di proteggere e rinnovare la nostra Europa. Ebbene, è proprio attraverso il confronto multilivello, è proprio attraverso il più significativo coinvolgimento del Comitato Europeo delle Regioni che si riesce a inverare i principi di sussidiarietà e di coesione che sono alla base della nostra istituzione. Grazie. Grazie mille. The floor to Mr. Rouillon. For two minutes, please. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Vice-président. C'est un peu frustrant de ne pas vous avoir en face de nous, mais je pense que ce sera pour bientôt de se retrouver face à face pour des réunions ici au Comité des Régions. Monsieur le Commissaire, vous êtes le Commissaire européen qui détient le, à présent le record de longévité dans vos fonctions, mais aussi un de ceux qui ont toujours été le, le plus fidèle au Comité des Régions. Et je souhaite très sincèrement vous en remercier, d'autant plus que vous êtes à présent notre interlocuteur sur les questions aussi variées que la Convention sur le futur de l'Europe, le mieux légiféré, la subsidiarité, les relations interinstitutionnelles ou encore le Brexit. Au nom du groupe socialiste, j'ai trois observations à partager avec vous. Euh, ma première euh, remarque euh, est de ne pas trop se presser pour conclure les travaux de la conférence d'ici mai 2022. L'expérience française de la Convention citoyenne pour le climat est parlante. Elle a été constituée en octobre 2019, mais la traduction législative de nos propositions est toujours en cours. Les consultations citoyennes ne se font pas par un claquement de doigts. Il est en revanche urgent de préparer une réflexion sur le dispositif émanant de cette conférence qui doivent perdurer au-delà de mai 2022 comme celle d'un mécanisme permanent de consultation citoyenne à l'image de ceux existant dans les régions belges. Et un tel mécanisme pourrait d'ailleurs être arrimé à la réforme que vous avez proposée fin avril au titre du mieux légiféré. Deuxième remarque, mon groupe souhaite aussi que la Convention aille au-delà des seules questions institutionnelles et propose des réformes politiques sur le fond. S'il ne fallait choisir qu'un thème de réforme à proposer serait celle de la boîte noire du semestre européen. Il faut que celle-ci soit profondément réformée pour devenir plus transparente, plus démocratique, plus territorialisée et plus durable. Aussi, faudrait-il vérifier que les propositions faites dans le cadre du semestre européen aient une valeur ajoutée européenne, en particulier dans la mise en œuvre des objectifs du développement durable. Troisième observation, Jacques Delors, le père biologique de notre institution, qui a donné son nom à notre bâtiment, disait qu'on qu ne tombe pas amoureux du marché intérieur. Que dire alors des analyses d'impact Cela dit, les analyses d'impact ne sont peut-être pas sexy, mais elles n'en sont pas moins une condition sine qua non pour la qualité de la législation européenne. C'est pourquoi Merci notre beaucoup. institution vous épaule, vous soutient au mieux en complétant les travaux de la Commission par des propositions territorialisées. Pouvons-nous espérer un retour d'ascenseur pour être pleinement associé à vos travaux en matière de prospective il y a en effet beaucoup de savoir-faire au niveau des régions et des communes sur ce sujet et je suis sûr que notre secrétariat général, notre secrétaire général serait disposé à mobiliser nos équipes d'experts sur cette thématique. Merci beaucoup de votre attention et surtout merci par avance de vos réponses. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Miss Ries, now for two minutes, please, from the PES group as well. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Vielen Dank, Herr Vizepräsident. Ich möchte mich ebenfalls im Namen der sozialdemokratischen Fraktion auf Ihre Vorschläge zum Themenkomplex Press bessere Rechtsetzung konzentrieren. Wir möchten insbesondere zwei Dinge in Ihrer Vorlage vom 29. April begrüßen. Erstens zum einen Ihre Selbstverpflichtung, dass bei allen Legislativvorschlägen konsistent geprüft wird, inwiefern diese Vorschläge zur Umsetzung der Ziele der Vereinten Nationen für nachhaltige Entwicklung beitragen. Allerdings würden wir uns wünschen, dass die EU-Kommission über ihren Schatten springt und eine solche Prüfung nicht nur bei Gesetzgebungsvorschlägen vornimmt, sondern ebenfalls bei den übergeordneten Politikprozessen, wie zum Beispiel dem europäischen Semester und auch bei der anstehenden Reform des Stabilitäts- und Wachstumspaktes. 
Wir brauchen einen besseren Fußabdruck der Nachhaltigkeit in allen Politikfeldern der Europäischen Union. In diesem Sinne würden wir uns auch erhoffen, dass die Debatte über den Rückgriff in der europäischen Politikgestaltung auf andere Indikatoren als dem Bruttoinlandsprodukt wieder angestoßen wird. Es wäre genau jetzt der geeignete Moment, wo wir ein bisschen Zeit haben, um die nächste Generation der EU-Förderprogramme ab 2027 zu konzipieren. Sicher ist das auch ein Thema für die Konferenz der Zukunft Europas. Zweitens möchte ich sehr begrüßen Ihre Absicht einer Vereinfachung öffentlicher Konsultationen durch Einführung einer einzigen Sondierung auf dem verbesserten Portal Ihre Meinung zählt. Aber bitte vergessen Sie bei so viel Vereinfachung aber nicht die Sprachenvielfalt. Mit ausschließlich Englisch kommen Sie zum Beispiel bei mir im Saarland nicht sehr weit. Und schließlich ein drittes Wort zu Ihrem vorgeschlagenen Wann-In-Wann-Out-Ansatz, mit dem Sie versuchen möchten, die Belastungen für die Bürgerinnen und Bürger und Unternehmen in einigen Legislativvorschlägen durch Einsparungen auszugleichen, die durch andere Vorschläge in demselben Politikbereich oder gegebenenfalls sogar in anderen Politikbereich eingeführt wurden. Unsere Fraktion begrüßt es ausdrücklich, dass Sie von der ursprünglich gedachten Anwendung des Rasenmäherprinzips, mit dem Deutschland sehr durchwachsene Erfahrungen gemacht hat, Abstand genommen haben. Aber nichtsdestotrotz scheint es uns noch immer recht unklar, wie die jeweiligen Kosten und Belastungen berechnet werden sollen. Bei der Bewertung verschiedener Kosten und Verwaltungslasten werden des Weiteren auch die Nichtkosten des Nichthandelns, Cost of Non-Europe, berechnet, obwohl dies insbesondere bei Sozial- und Umweltaspekten ein wichtiger Aspekt darstellt. Der Ansatz, einen Rechtsakt für jeden vorgeschlagenen neuen Rechtsakt zu stornieren, ist zudem kein faktengeschütztes oder wissenschaftlich fundiertes Thank Konzept. You. Deshalb der Appell an Sie und vielen Dank. Thank you. The floor now to Ms. Landergren for um, the Renew Europe Group. Tack, herr ordförande, bäste vice ordförande, mina damer och herrar. Vi är många som är chockerade av de beslut som vidtagits av vissa kommuner, regioner och regeringar runt om i Europa. Som leder till en ökad intolerans. Som liberaler har vi gått från ord till handling. Vi la därför fram en resolution om borgmästarnas roll för att minska fobien gentemot hbtqi-personer på Alde-kongressen för några veckor sedan. Vi byggde vidare på våra erfarenheter av dialoger med icke likasinnade kommuner och regionpolitiker och tog inspiration från Europaparlamentet som utropade EU till en frihetszon för hbtqi-personer. LGBTIQ Freedom Zone. Med detta står jag inför er och anpassar orden från en välkänd medborgarrättsaktivist. Jag har en dröm. Det är en dröm som är djupt rotad i den europeiska drömmen. Jag har en dröm där barn som växer upp i EU en dag kommer att bo i en union där de inte kommer att bedömas utifrån vem de älskar. Jag har en dröm om att europeiska städer står upp för friheten. Jag ber därför kommissionen att föreslå ett system som gör det möjligt för städer och kommuner att enkelt deklarera sin ort som en frihetszon för hbtqi-personer i arbetsprogrammet för 2022. I egenskap av samordnare med ansvar för övervakning av genomslaget inom regionkommittén och en av regionkommitténs tre företrädare för plattformen Fit for Future betonar jag att unionen vilar på lagar som tjänar dess medborgare, företag och offentliga myndigheter. Lagar som är transparenta, öppna, lätta att följa, lagar som gör våra liv enklare, bättre och säkrare att leva. I sommar som föredragande för plattformen Fit for Future kommer jag att lägga fram mitt betänkande om direktivet om gränsöverskridande hälso- och sjukvård med konkreta förslag 
hur lagen kan göras smartare. Jag vill att patienter enklare ska kunna söka vård hos läkare utomlands. Jag vill att vårdpersonal lättare ska kunna samarbeta med sina kollegor utomlands. Jag vill se mer digitala verktyg för att möjliggöra överföring av uppgifter, register och bilder. Jag vill att det ska fungera bättre för gränsregioner som vill ingå stabila partnerskap och erbjuda gränsöverskridande hälso- och sjukvårdstjänster till medborgarna på båda sidor om gränsen. Jag vill att medborgarna har bättre kunskap om dess möjlighet. Medborgarna har rätt att veta hur deras Europa tjänar dem och skyddar deras hälsa både inom och utanför nationella gränser. Tack för din uppmärksamhet, vice ordförande Sefcovic. Jag ser fram emot att fortsätta arbeta tillsammans med er i plattformen Fit for Future. Thank you. The floor now to Mr. Ortil from the ECR Group, please. Panie Przewodniczący, Szanowni Państwo, chciałem bardzo serdecznie podziękować Panu Przewodniczącemu w imieniu Grupy EKR za obecność, za przekazane te wszystkie informacje i komentarze. Pamiętamy też, że w październiku ubiegłego roku Przewodnicząca Komisji Europejskiej Ursula von Leyen oświadczyła, że główny priorytetem Unii w roku 2021 ma być ratowanie życia ludzkiego i oczywiście utrzymanie miejsc pracy. Myślę, że ta przyjęta z zadowoleniem deklaracja powinna zostać aktualna do dziś. Nie powinniśmy ją modyfikować tych priorytetów, a jedynie dodać, że to jest w tym trybie po pandemii. Tak byśmy chcieli, myślę, że tak się też stanie. Wiemy o tym, że na dzień dzisiejszy jest zaledwie 50 albo aż 50% Europejczyków zaszczepionych pierwszą dawką. To jest, nie jest dobra wiadomość. Pamiętamy o tym, że e, powinniśmy osiągnąć 80% zaszczepienia populacji. To jest cel. Musimy sobie to wyznaczyć i to zrealizować, bo inaczej e, tęsknąć za codziennym życiem, e, za spotkaniem bez przeszkód z przyjaciółmi, no, będziemy wracali do e, różnego rodzaju lockdownów. A przed nami jest naprawdę mimo wszystko długa droga do pełnego po prostu do normalności. Musimy to mówić, żebyśmy też nie ulegli takiemu wrażeniu, że już wszystko jest poza nami. Ja myślę, że dobra współpraca i zaangażowanie instytucji europejskich, władz naszych krajowych, władz samorządowych w zakresie dostaw i dystrybucji tych szczepionek to jest, to jest dobra, dobra praktyka. Ja myślę, że no, musimy żałować, że mało miejsca w propozycjach dotyczących Europejskiej Unii Zdrowotnej poświęcono roli samorządu w zakresie ochrony zdrowia. Przecież to my zatrudniamy, uruchamiamy, wdrażamy politykę zdrowotną, uruchamiamy profilaktykę, to naprawdę na nas bardzo wiele, wiele ciąży. Szanowni Państwo, chcę powiedzieć, że tym kolejnym priorytetem powinny być, powinno być dalsze zwiększenie badań naukowej i wreszcie zabiegania o tą autonomię gospodarczą w Europie, nie tylko w obszarze produkcji leków, ale też w innych obszarach. Wiemy, jak nam obnażyła tą kwestię te braki pandemia. Wyciągnijmy z tego oczywiście wnioski. Chciałbym, aby priorytetem samorządów, znaczy tak jest, że priorytetem będzie wdrażanie nowej perspektywy finansowej. Tu jest naprawdę dużo środków. My w Polsce mamy 37% przeznaczone na z Krajowego Planu Obudowy na Ochronę Klimatu, z Polityki Spójności 30%, także jest to wielka szansa dla, no, dla ochrony klimatu, dla też przedsiębiorców. No i oczywiście myślę, że musimy stawiać na tradycyjną infrastrukturę drogową i kolejową lotniczą, ale chciałbym zwrócić uwagę Komisji Europejskiej na konieczność opracowania nowych rozwiązań legislacyjnych dla problemów, jakie mają porty lotnicze. Myślę, że rozwijanie mobilności, multimodalności w Europie Stanowić musi niegasnący priorytet Komisji Europejskiej. Bardzo dziękuję, Panie Przewodniczący. Thank you. Mr. Ivaniuk, please, from the EA Group. Panie Przewodniczący, Szanowni Państwo, lepsze stanowienie prawa to decyzje podejmowane jak najbliżej obywateli albo wspólnie z nimi najlepiej. To mogą zapewnić najskuteczniej władze lokalne, które na co dzień prowadzą dialog ze swoimi mieszkańcami. Programy krajowe i polityka spójności Unii Europejskiej próbuje niwelować różnice między krajami czy regionami, ale bogaci stają się coraz bogatsi, natomiast biedniejsi ciągle pozostają w tyle. Z naszych doświadczeń wynika wprost, że coraz bardziej pogłębiają się różnice w samych regionach, a szczególnie pomiędzy właśnie obszarami metropolitalnymi a obszarami wiejskimi, odległymi. 
gdzie kumulują się problemy demograficzne, gospodarcze, brak elementarnej infrastruktury i obniżająca się ilość usług publicznych. Dlatego warto podkreślić, że opinia członka naszej grupy, pana Stensona, w sprawie agendy obszarów wiejskich znalazła uznanie Komitetu Regionów, potem zaowocowała agendą poświęconą wyłącznie obszarom wiejskim. Rozpoczynająca się debata o przyszłości Europy tylko podkreśliła, że problemy pogłębiania dysproporcji rozwojowych dotyczą większości krajów Unii Europejskich, a zrównoważony rozwój jest fikcją. W Polsce budżet krajowy na rolnictwo i obszary wiejskie przeznacza niewiele ponad 10% wydatków, natomiast w polityce spójności ze środków regionalnych trafiło na obszary wiejskie od 10 do 20% alokacji w zależności od regionu. To jest 4 do 8% wszystkich środków w danej perspektywie finansowej. Gdy na obszarach wiejskich w Polsce zamieszkuje 38% populacji Polaków i jest to 93% terytorium kraju. Władze lokalne uczestniczą w konsultacjach dotyczących strategii rozwoju regionu, która jest bardzo ogólna, ale tabele finansowe już tworzą zarządy regionu w gabinetach. Próbą rozwiązania problemu byłaby obowiązkowa alokacja środków będących w dyspozycji regionów, w Polsce jest to około 40%, proporcjonalna do ilości mieszkańców miast i obszarów wiejskich, ze szczególnym uwzględnieniem obszarów prowincjonalnych. Głównym kryterium powinna być wysokość dochodów mieszkańców, czyli deklarowana w zeznaniach PIT, dodatkowymi powierzchnia gminy i liczba mieszkańców. Zbędne byłyby też konkursy, Cele perspektywy mogą być dookreślone, na co pieniądze już wspólnie z mieszkańcami. W ten sposób Europa przybliżyłaby się do swoich obywateli. W zagospodarowaniu wsparcia uczestniczyły praktycznie wszyscy chętni mieszkańcy, przyspieszając tworzenie społeczeństwa obywatelskiego i dialogu w wspólnej tożsamości europejskiej. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much, Mr. Walsh, now from the Greens Party. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident, vielen Dank, Herr Seskovic, vielen Dank für Ihren Beitrag. Bessere Rechtsetzung und Vorausschau sind sowie Subsidiarität wichtig, um wirklich in Europa voranzukommen. Und uns als Vertreter der lokalen Gebietskörperschaften geht es natürlich um die Art, wie die lokalen Gebietskörperschaften in diesen Prozess eingebunden werden. Und ich erlebe gerade, wie Regional Hub als Baustein des, der Fit for Future Plattform auch in einem Landkreis meines Landes Schleswig-Holstein einen wichtigen Beitrag zur Beteiligung, Evaluierung liefert und dadurch im Grunde das ganze Projekt voranbringt. Genehmigungsverfahren, Sie haben es bereits sehr deutlich gesagt, sollen nicht abgebaut werden, aber kürzer und effizienter gestaltet werden. Wenn wir sehen, was wir in zehn Jahren umsetzen müssen, um wirklich den Green Deal zu schaffen, dann, glaube ich, wird deutlich, wie wichtig dieser Bereich ist, um äh, zu schnellem Handel zu kommen. Ich nenne noch ein paar weitere Punkte, die aus Sicht der Grünen Gruppe sehr wichtig sind. Das ist einmal der Fokus auf die Umsetzung des Aufbauinstruments Next Generation EU. Wichtig vor allem die aktive Mitwirkung der Kommunen und Regionen dabei. Die Kommission und das Europäische Parlament müssen darüber wachen, dass die Mittel entsprechend den Vorgaben auch verwendet werden und dass es uns gelingt, mindestens auch die 37 Prozent für Klimainvestitionen umzusetzen. Ich denke, die nationalen Programme zur Umsetzung lassen doch eine ganze Reihe Fragen offen. Und in diesem Zusammenhang ist es auch wichtig, die Verlängerung der aktuellen außerordentlichen Flexibilität der Regel der staatlichen Beihilfe im Rahmen der Investitionsinitiative Plus bis Ende 22 fortzusetzen. Das ist wichtig für die Situation in den Ländern, in den Regionen, um Effizienz handeln zu können. Ebenso muss die Situation der Kommunen und, die, und Regionen und die Auswirkungen auf die Pandemie jeweils berücksichtigt werden, wie sie vor Ort ist, wenn es um die Überarbeitung des Stabilitäts- und Wachstumspaktes und die European Economic Governance geht. Thank you. Öffentliche Investitionen, das als letzten deutlichen Punkt, müssen im Grunde nachhaltige Maßnahmen, die zur Sicherung und Verbesserung der Lebensumstände der nächsten Generation sind, ermöglichen und nicht wie normale Schulden behandelt werden. Thank you very much. We have four more remaining interventions. Uh, one minute each. Mr. Kaki from the EPP for one minute. Gentile Vicepresidente Sekovic, Presidente Sissi Costas, 
Il dibattito di oggi ci indica come unendo le forze si producono leggi migliori. A questo incipit aggiungerei il concetto di ascolto. Solamente ascoltando i cittadini europei si produrranno leggi migliori. Naturalmente la cooperazione del Comitato delle Regioni con la Commissione su questo tema, grazie a piattaforme come Fit for Future o le reti esistenti, è una importante opportunità, direi un'ottima base di partenza. Tutte le iniziative messe in campo dalla Commissione lo sono lodevoli, ma non sono sufficienti. A mio avviso i cittadini dell'Unione Europea sono ancora poco coinvolti o forse poco informati. Se con il Better Regulation si vuole rafforzare il principio di sussidiarietà come pienamente rispettato, sarà importante insistere con azioni che invertano la tendenza dei sondaggi condotti in tutta l'Unione Europea. Fa piacere registrare che i cittadini ripongano molta fiducia negli enti locali e regionali, ma, questo, ma che questo significhi riporla meno nei governi nazionali o nella Unione Europea deve preoccupare. La distanza da colmare è ancora molta, ma sono certo che stimolerà lei, noi e la Commissione a lavorare con maggiore impegno. La Commissione sfrutta ancora di più il Comitato delle Regioni perché l'esperienza regionale dei suoi membri, apprezzati maggiormente dai cittadini dell'Unione Europea, è un importante valore aggiunto per il futuro dell'Europa. Grazie. Mr. Czerstowski, for one minute from the ECR. Szanowny Panie Przewodniczący, Szanowni Państwo, ja reprezentuję największy region górniczy, czyli Ustwo Śląskie i myślę, że na tym przykładzie chcę się krótko podzielić pewnym problemem, który nas dotyczy i myślę, że on powinien też być przykładem na to, że stanowienie lepszego prawa po stronie Komisji, po stronie Unii Europejskiej i wdrażanie tego prawa po stronie państw członkowskich i regionów musi być równomierne. My jesteśmy teraz przed wielkim procesem transformacji sektora górniczego, odejścia od węgla. Przygotujemy plan sprawiedliwej transformacji, rozmawiamy z organizacjami pozarządowymi, ze społecznikami, z mieszkańcami. Prowadzimy ten dialog od bardzo dawna, a teraz pojawia się na przykład informacja, że jedno miasto czy cały podregion może wypaść do braku dofinansowania unijnego na Fundusz Sprawiedliwej Transformacji z uwagi na to, że organ nadrzędny nad samorządem regionalnym czy lokalnym wydał koncesję. To nie jest sprawiedliwa transformacja. Nie powinno takie, takie rzeczy mieć miejsca z uwagi na to, że właśnie budujemy zaufanie naszych mieszkańców do Unii Europejskiej poprzez dialog. A tutaj tego dialogu w tym momencie brakuje. Bardzo dziękuję. Thank you very much. Mr. Bereni from the EPP for one minute. Thank you very much for the floor. I will speak in Slovak. Vážený pán podpredseda, milý Maroš, som veľmi rád, že opakovane ťa vidím aj keď cez obrazovku. Som veľmi rád, že pán podpredseda zdôraznil, že budúca právna regulácia by mala vychádzať z princípu jednoduchosti a by nemala byť komplikovaná. Na to, aby mohla politika súdržnosti posilniť obnovu a zelenú transformáciu, potrebujeme reguláciu, ktorá nezaťažuje ľudí, podniky či miestne alebo regionálne samozprávy. Môj druhý bod, vítam iniciatívu Európskej komisie diskutovať s predstaviteľmi samozpráv o strategickom výhľade do budúceho roka, veď my sme asi najbližšie k každodenným problémom občanov. A po tretie, kríza spojená s príchodom pandémie koronavírusu opäť dokázala, že regióny zohrávajú nezastupiteľnú úlohu pri správe veci verejných. A preto my zdôrazňujeme, že zdravotníctvo, zdravotnícká pomoc, sociálna infraštruktúra, cezhraničná pomoc aj teraz ohľadom juho, juhomoravského kraja a prírodnej katastrofy ukázali, že táto cezhraničná pomoc by mala byť bez problémov a bez bytočných prekážok a v tejto veci Európska komisia môže pomôcť pri uh, nastavení regulácie. Ďakujem. And finally... Last but not least, Mr. Borboli, for one minute from the EPP. Um, thank you. Dear uh, Vice President, uh, dear colleagues, I would like to address you an important subject that uh, is closely related uh, to EU policies, mostly in this year. Currently in Romania, we are facing a serious uh, problem regarding the cohabitation with the large carnivores because the number of damage uh, caused by wild animals. Uh, this issue has started uh, years ago, about which we have uh, filed a petition to the European Parliament and also elaborated a COR opinion on the subject of coexistence with the large carnivores. Now the number of bird populations has increased significantly, 8% per year. 
uh, with uh, 10 times higher number than the optima relative to the forest area. We are uh, facing more attacks and encounters uh, than years before with victims in serious health conditions. It is an urgent situation and quick measures need to be taken. We need an urgent investigation on this matter. That uh, is why I asked the Commission to analyze the situation of the large carnivores in Romania and the implementation of the Habitats Directive, uh, given that Articles four, uh, 14 and 16 Thank state you. very clearly that the human life uh, and health are primordial. I also propose for the DG environment to include uh, the war program for 2022, the external meeting of the large carnivores platform to be organized in my Thank country, Hargita County in Romania. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Vice President Sefcovic, um, you have the floor for your reaction. Thank you very much, uh, dear Mr. President, and also all the honorable members of uh, the Committee of Regions for your wide-ranging uh, comments, suggestions, and also questions. And I will do my best uh, to respond to you in, in allocated time. I will start with the comments of Mr. Geblevich uh, on uh, importance uh, of the foresight and uh, inter interconnection with the uh, RIGHAP 2.0. First and foremost, I really would like to appreciate the fact that the Committee of Regions set up uh, its own uh, uh, foresight uh, capacities. I know that uh, uh, the Committee of Regions, the Secretary General, Mr. Bliskovsky, are paying a lot of attention to these modern governance techniques, and uh, Committee of Re Regions is a very important part of this ESPAS network, which is interinstitutional uh, setup where all EU institutions are discussing. Uh, the foresight topics and how we can use them in uh, better uh, policy making and in uh, better uh, future oriented legislative uh, uh, work. I also would like to inform you that uh, under the General Affairs Council of the EU, we formed the uh, EU wide network of 27 ministers uh, for the future. And it would be, of course, extremely welcome if we can link up with the foresight capacities on regional level, as it was suggested by Mr. Bereni, but also by, uh, by other, other speakers, because indeed we need to have very direct contributions how certain legislation is impacting uh, the regions, but also how you see the regions from the perspective on uh, longer term planning. Uh, together with uh, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Arm Armour and Mr. Uh, Rouillon, there was a question about the open uh, strategic uh, autonomy. And indeed, I uh, think that uh, uh, latest uh, um, uh, assessment of uh, what we did well, where we didn't really uh, manage so well uh, in the COVID crisis was published by the Commission a couple of days ago. And one lesson was very clear. If it comes uh, to pharmaceutical products, if it comes to health issues, we have to be much stronger than we have been um, in, in the past. And uh, therefore, we started uh, the work on health union. We will invest much more in uh, biomedicine, high level uh, research, and uh, this new uh, agency with the name of uh, HERA. And we see that production, especially of vaccines uh, across the Europe, is uh, being increased. We are actually uh, we are actually the global major manufacturer and distributor of the vaccines. Clearly, and without any dispute, we are number one uh, exporter of the vaccines to, to, the, to, the, to the whole world, developed or developing. And uh, uh, I agree with you that vaccination is the only key to COVID-free future. And uh, there we also would need uh, your help uh, to accelerate the pace of uh, pace of vaccination, especially in the countries or in the regions where the pace is slower. Currently, the, the latest figures I have at our disposal is that uh, we have uh, uh, 430 uh, million uh, doses uh, delivered to the member states, <clears throat> 350 million people who got already the first dose, uh, and uh, we have uh, almost 40% of our population uh, uh, who are fully uh, uh, vaccinated. 
So I think that uh, we are on track as a, as a, as a EU to be at 70% level by the end of summer. But we know that the numbers are quite differentiated and different if it comes to, uh, to, to different uh, 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 regions and different uh, member states. And therefore, I think outreach from your side, highlighting the importance of this, not only for health, but also for the economic perspective uh, and for the young people to come back to the normal life uh, young, uh, young people uh, like to live, I think is absolutely crucial. And therefore, I, I agree with Mr. Ortil and um, also with uh, uh, with um, uh, with uh, other speakers who've been referring to these very important issues. Several of you touched upon the open uh, strategic autonomy. Indeed, we did our uh, homework. Uh, you would probably recall that my first foresight report was about resilience. And now we are working on open strategic autonomy, and uh, um, we did very thorough analysis of 5,200 products uh, uh, which we are importing um, uh, to the to the EU. We discovered that in more than 100, we are quite dependent, and I think that in six, we are very very dependent. So the number doesn't seem to be so high, but at the same time, they are all in critical sectors, and therefore we need to learn the lesson and to make sure that Europe will not. Um, and kind of limit our freedom to act, and we have to be uh, strategically autonomous in the, in the crucial areas of uh, businesses, and we are working very hard on that to achieve it, as we demonstrated on uh, vaccine productions, uh, uh, medicament uh, uh, production, or the field, which I know quite well, the, the batteries uh, uh, production and electro, uh, electro uh, mobility. Uh, I also would like to appreciate all those uh, uh, positive encouragement in the field of uh, conference on uh, uh, future of Europe. Here, I think, again, we had a very good start. Now we have, uh, uh, like, uh, I think, 18,000 people debating on uh, the digital platform, which was especially established for the communication among the citizens. I would just uh, advise you, have a look at it, because it's a unique platform where we use artificial intelligence for interpretation and translation so Estonians can debate with Portuguese, uh, Slovakians uh, debate with Swedes in their own languages. And I believe that this would be a very good communication tool also in the future, let's say for even more fine-tuned uh, consultations with the stakeholders. But what we feel right now is that we are kind of plateauing, uh, plateauing on this level of participation. And uh, we see that the dominant participants are coming uh, from the uh, Brussels uh, bubble, and therefore you could help us a lot to bring the European debates to your regions. Uh, uh, any event when you discuss the current or future policy, please uh, put it under the umbrella or label on the Conference of Future of Europe. The principles are very simple. We just need uh, you to send us the summary of the discussion, and it would be, I'm sure, very welcome contributions when we will be uh, making sure that uh, we are working on the key takeaways from this Grand European, uh, which we are, are starting uh, to really shape together the future of Europe uh, for our citizens uh, living in your regions. Help us to get the word out, help us to be, uh, uh, them to be more involved. Then there was a lot of uh, uh, words on uh, recovery and resilience plans and, uh, and the need for the regions to be more included into the process. I totally agree with you. That's uh, uh, one of the key messages uh, the president and all, all us commissioners are delivering when talking to the national authorities. Uh, now we have more and more plans uh, approved. Uh, we have now the money uh, to finance this pre-financing. As you know, we had uh, a very successful issuance of bonds. I think it's more than uh, 35 billion euros right now. Uh, we, we got... Uh, 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 the, the sale for, for excellent uh, conditions. So we are really equipping Europe with very important financial tool, but we need to demonstrate that we can spend this money efficiently, that they go to the projects uh, which are needed, which, would, which can kickstart our economies. And for that, of course, we need the support uh, of the regions, and therefore we are calling on all um, uh, member states to have inclusive debates uh, uh, for the local uh, uh, authorities to be part of these discussions because we need public support for these transformational changes we want to, uh, we want to finance uh, 
by uh, uh, this uh, 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 by this instrument. And I see that I'm also exceeding uh, my time here. So my last uh, words would be uh, to thank uh, all of you who are uh, participating uh, in our Fit for Future platform. Thank you for the work and looking forward to our future cooperation. Thank you very much, dear Apostolos. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Maros. Uh, it is, uh, again, a great pleasure to have you here today with us. I think we had a very interesting and fruitful discussion with our members here. And uh, I want to thank you, Vice President uh, Sefcovic, because you have been real, a real friend of the Committee of Regions and a supporter of our efforts here. So thank you again, and uh, we are looking forward in continuing this uh, strong collaboration together in the near future uh, and have a safe uh, uh, continuation of your, of your week. Let's hope that uh, the pandemic will finally end and we will be able to meet in person as well. Thank you very much. Okay, dear colleagues.